My name is Andrew Cushman. I'm a director in the Security Engineering and Community Group, and I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to be here for a couple of reasons. One, because today Microsoft's going to give you a whole track focused on security. We've never done this before. <laughs> I'm also thrilled because uh, it's actually here uh, and the waiting's over. I want to tell you that uh, I think I've got the best job in the security industry. In fact, I think I've got the best job at Microsoft. Uh, and today I'm going get to get to talk to you about how the work that I'm doing and my team is doing is changing the culture at Microsoft and changing the products that we deliver. I do want to set some context for you. This is a whole track, and it does kind of hang together. Mine is the, the keynote. Mine is probably the least technical of all the talks, but I guarantee you that you will learn something at these talks, regardless of what others might have said, uh, and you will find that they are deeply technical. So first, who am I? As I said, I work in the Security Engineering and Community Group. I've been at Microsoft about 16 years, 17 years now. I've seen a lot of change. Uh, I started out testing localized software. I remember testing uh, the spell checker on Word 5.0, where you had to take that five and a quarter inch floppy and switch it out. I've been in security about six years. I actually count the time that I spent on the IIS team as part of security. Uh, you know, NIMDA and Code Red. I think that kind of qualifies as being part of uh, security. You know, and actually, some of the highs and lows came on the IS side. Uh, I think that one of the lows would have to be NIMDA and Code Red. And you know, I remember that conversation in the hallway with Mike Howard, who came up to me and said, "Andrew, we we really we got to change the uh, the." permissions on the MSADC directory. We got to turn script execute off. And I said, mm, you know, Mike, you make a really compelling security argument, and I really want to go do that, but I'm particularly worried about the app compat impact. I don't, I don't know if somebody's actually relying on that setting, and then they go to upgrade, and their upgrade breaks. So that wasn't one of the better decisions I made. I should have listened to Mike. Uh, he actually sits in the office next to me, and he reminds me on a, a regular basis that I should listen to him. Uh, about two and a half years ago, after we shipped IIS 6, I said, I'm looking for a new challenge, something new to do. I was interested in security. I ended up uh, on the security team at Microsoft. And my role today is really about outreach to the security researcher community. I'm the, I'm the bridge between the community and Microsoft. Uh, and in some ways, I'm the, I'm the hacker ombudsman within Microsoft, so that I represent the viewpoints of the research community, and I'm their advocate. So why am I here today? Well, I'm here to talk about the holistic approach that Microsoft is using, is taking towards security. It's an approach um, it's a holistic approach that delivers changes in how we engineer products from a security perspective, changes the security in the products that we actually deliver, and also changes uh, how we integrate and reach out to the security community. Today's talk is really in three parts, a little bit of history and context setting, uh, an overview of SDL, the Security Development Lifecycle, and then also show you some results. Because I did learn that the security community actually wants to touch and feel the things. Uh, you remember your algebra teacher back in junior high? She wanted to, she, it, it wasn't enough to just show you the answer, to give you the answer, give her the answer. She needed to see the results. She wanted, you needed to show your work. Well, that's what that's what today is all about, is Microsoft showing you the work so that you don't have to go read a white paper on Microsoft.com and say, another marketing white paper that talks about how great the security is. 
you're going to hear today from the engineers, the designers, the architects who built either the heap or the networking stack or the Wi-Fi stack or IE or the guy that's responsible, overall responsibility for meeting the security bar in Windows Vista. You can read the three things that I want you to take away from here, but really the way I uh, have been talking about this lately that I think kind of resonates with people is, you know, it was about four or five years ago we went to the doctor, and the doctor said, dude, you are seriously ill. <laughs> You're about 100 pounds overweight, you got diabetes, your heart's bad, you got a high blood pressure. If you don't do something drastic, you're going to die. That was kind of, you know, Nimda, Blaster, Slammer. That was a, that was a pretty good wake-up call. And, you know, how a lot of people will get that message and they get, or they'll make that New Year's resolution that says, I'm going to go lose that 15 pounds I got over Christmas. And then January, the gyms are all full. February, it's still pretty full, but come July and August, it's like there's nobody in the frickin' gym anymore. And that, that's not the case for Microsoft. We've actually made the lifestyle change, the lifestyle commitment. We like going to the gym. We like those endorphins that are pumping, you know? It's not just about you have to go ship a more secure product. We actually like that, and we're getting into it. Now it's into a, it's a, a, a very positive cycle. The other, so we get it. We know that we had a problem. We know what that problem is. We're committed to making sure we do the right thing, and we're in it for the long haul. So first, a little bit of background, a little bit of history. You know, in the early years, MSRC, uh, I've seen some t-shirts that say, uh, you know, Patch Tuesday. I, I actually like those t-shirts a lot because it takes me, it, it reminds me that we didn't always used to be as predictable and as well, uh, we didn't deliver results quite as well. The MSRC, the early years there, we scrambled to get that first bulletin out. I, uh, in fact, when we published that to Microsoft.com, that server was under somebody's desk. The Secure Windows Initiative, in the early years, that was two guys. That was Jason Garms and Mike Howard, and they did this because they were committed to security. They were passionate about it, and they said, we need to go do something there. That's now, uh, it's, a, it's a team that has grown and refined its skills over time. The TWC memo from uh, Bill G back in 2002. I'm sure a bunch of people in the audience probably read that and went, yeah, 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 another marketing white paper, another marketing white paper. I don't think very many of you sitting in the audience could have predicted the kinds of dramatic change that that paper has had on Microsoft. You know, kind of the dark days, Security Community Outreach. This was our first attempt, this was the first realization really that partnering with the security community was key for us in delivering more secure products. We saw some individual uh, accomplishments. With IS6, we were applying security development lifecycle, although it wasn't actually called SDL back then, and it didn't have as formal a process as it does today. But that's what we were doing. We were doing education and training guidance around development standards, as well as secure off by default. SQL Server SP3, similar kinds of things. SDL was applied. Windows XP SP2, again, we came back with some uh, solid engineering that improved the security. And today, Windows Vista is the first time that we're applying SDL on the whole operating system before it ships. A little bit more context. The ecosystem's changed and changes rapidly, more rapidly than I can. Uh, the, the pace of change is just incredibly rapid from my perspective. Uh, it's no longer about broad scale attacks, it's now about very targeted, specific attacks. The maturing, the, the tools and the information that are available to security researchers today 
is marvelous compared to what it was 10 years ago, if you're a security researcher. Uh, the other big change here is that there is a lot of money in the ecosystem today. There's always been money there, but there's a fantastic amount of money. And there's, uh, I call it a very hot economy. There, the inflationary aspects are pretty, pretty uh, significant. And money is the primary motivator. Adware, spyware, botnets, and bot herders. And frankly, there isn't any stop to this. I don't see the change. Uh, I don't see the pace of change slackening any. The other thing I'll highlight is that uh, attack surface continues to expand and new attack vectors and attack uh, scenarios. And combine that with unlimited creativity on the researcher side. You know, things we used to do are not good enough anymore. I'm not going to read all of these to you. You can certainly see them. You can read them yourselves. But uh, again, the aspect I would highlight here is that uh, the mainstream press, it's not just savvy security researchers that recognize that you know the targeted attacks are about corporate or government espionage or that uh, exactly how much of a motivator money is in the, in the economy. So in that changed uh, ecosystem, it brings new challenges and it also uh, high, uh, exacerbates some of the old challenges. So when Microsoft thinks about how do we actually solve some of these problems, these are some of the challenges that we face. You know, researchers and ISVs are at odds. We do fortunately agree on one thing, and that's the top level thing, and that uh, safety for computer users is, is important to all of us. We kind of disagree on tactics, though. You know, I had this slide written before we traded some mail with uh, H.D. Moore last month. I was like, it was almost verbatim. Yeah, we can agree that c computer safety is important, but we disagree on how we actually, how the best way to get there. Security researchers don't necessarily trust software ISVs. In fact, a big part of my job is to change perceptions, both internally at Microsoft and uh, perceptions of Microsoft in the security research community. A lot of times, uh, in the, in the absence of information, people will go ahead and make assumptions about why certain actions took place. Well, Microsoft must have done that because they're a greedy monopolist, or because they don't understand security, or because maybe the people who work there are just plain stupid. So putting a face on a name, that's a big part of what I do. Uh, you know, We've been talking about responsible disclosure versus full disclosure for uh, you know, more years than Steve Lipner has been alive, I think. Um, and the changed environment hasn't, hasn't given us a, hasn't, we haven't figured out what's the answer there yet. It's one of those problems that ex is exacerbated. Uh, the changed threat landscape is another huge challenge for us. And this also has uh, uh, implications for responsible disclosure versus full disclosure. You know, the, sh the shrinking delta between publishing details of a vulnerability and exploitation of that vulnerability puts users and Microsoft customers at more risk of, of, of full disclosure. 